three years ago, uh, the entire department of Planning Education has asked the department of State University to develop uh, a sense of court system to, for assessing uh, vulnerability of transportation network. And that's why we involved in the project, and that's why we can use the map window to this application. So today I would like to share the experience of map window uh, with you guys. So what is the vulnerability that we would like to assess? So we focus on the freight transportation. And you can see that uh, from 2002 to uh, 2035, the increase of the freight transportation has grown more than double. And especially the one that share a lot of percentage in terms of the mode of transportation is the truck transportation. You can see this bar, which is skyline. You can see that the disruption to the freight transportation will contribute very negative consequences to the uh, US economy. So that's why we'd like to focus more. And one of our former FHWD, Federal Highway Administrator, uh, Rick Kapler, he uh, gave a talk in Utah and he supported the point. Okay, so he said, like, if we can eliminate the French shock point, the bottlenecks, how much more competitive than make American uh, products in the global marketplace? And if we target on the major French shock point, uh, we would like to emphasize on the truck corridor. So that is the story of the business support system that we would like to attack and address the freight shock, shock point and bottlenecks. So you can see, in the past decades, we have a lot of natural disaster and man-made uh, terrorists that try to attack freight shock point and transportation network. It is, you can see that uh, in many states, this is the Example of the shock point disruptions. So recently we have uh, Minnesota, I 35 West, the disruption of this. And the consequence of this event has big impact not only for the fatalities, the passengers, and the freight transportation. So that's why we have come up with the today presentations. So we're going to talk about the research framework. Uh, and how we can estimate the inputs for the transport system. The input here, we're talking about the truck demand. So we can call that truck origin and destination truck tables. And the third one, we would like to develop a vulnerability assessment method and the support system too, which use map window GIS. And the last, we will use the Utah as a case study to demonstrate how we use the customized tool. So you can see, this is the input that we need to input in the defense support system. So two of the input, one is the truck body truck table, which is the demand on the truck, especially for the Utah. And the other one, we need to input the transportation truck point to the defense support system with this assessment framework and visualization in the GIS. As you can see, this defense support system uh, input the input here and also the framework that we would like to visualize in the GIS systems. So after we develop this, we can have our case study for Utah and results from the case study will be very good recommendation for the planner, decision maker about the mitigations of the problem. So first of all, we ask about what is the truck or different tables. So this is the input, so I can go very briefly, but I can say that to use it as the input for the decision support system, we need to have the demand on the truck. The question is, do you have a demand? Uh, when we go investigate more and we ask the state government, do you have a truck demand so we can input the, our decision support system? So they say, no, we don't have it. So the second question is like, do you, what we need to do. So we, uh, they said like, okay, you can go purchase it. The question go to us like, okay, do you have open source? No, the question is no. So we need to build everything from the scratch from zero. So this is the step that we uh, uh, develop the truck only truck tables. So briefly, okay, we use the secondary data source, which is the model from Prometheus. 
and develop using these six steps. Okay, using the data, the frame data, to develop the truck demand for the user. And this is the result that we can get. And uh, the E represents the external station, the I represents the internal. And you can see the one I to I, which means the truck movement within Utah. The one from E to I is from other state to Utah. The one from I to E is from Utah move out. And E to E is a true fit. As you can see, these four elements can represent the movement of the truck transportation in Utah. And this is the result that we estimate that in 2002, we have about 7 million trips per year. And in 30 years later, we have about more than doubles of the trips. And you can see that these trips uh, will be the input for our business support systems. So we also validate this with the truck count and uh, the accuracy is actually uh, pretty good. And uh, we use this one to develop the next step, which is using uh, the trip on the trip table to develop the distance support system. So I will stick with this uh, slide a little bit. Uh, this is the framework of distance support systems. Okay? In the uh, right hand side, you can see this is the three elements that we need to input to the distance support system. So the first one, we would like to generate a what-if scenario, for example, like if this bridge is destroyed, what can happen? The second one, we need to have the GIS map, which is the transportation network. The third one that I uh, mentioned previously, we what would like to have the track loaded trip table, which is the demand. So these three elements is the significant elements to put in the decision support system. So map window is the tool that decision maker can see and visualize the result of the uh, analyze, analysis. And also the this one we call it the transportation network analysis technique. So with all this, the result outcome of the decision support system will be the connectivity and the freight flow pattern. So uh, I will show you the snapshot of the decision support system. You can see this is the the mapping node GIS we used in the first quite a lot. But the right hand side here, so we provide for an assessment panel. So this assessment panel, you can assess the consequence of the disruption of the freight choke point. So in this panel, you can generate the scenario, for example, like the bridge disruptions. And also, we can assess the connectivity. Okay, and the connectivity here, we're talking about the this path. For example, like first, if you use the this path between county A and county B, okay, but there's a scenario that the bridge is struck, you may not be able to use the best route anymore. So probably you need to go to find what is the second route. The second route represents that we have increased distance. What's important here, the increased distance will make the delay and the congestions. And also, not only the connectivity, if you may think about that, if the is longer detour, but it's in the middle of nowhere, it may not affect a lot. But it's a long detour in the city or the, in the metropolitan area, that will affect a lot because there has a lot of of demand. Okay, so these two will give you the overview of uh, the results of uh, connectivity and the pattern change. 